Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, very happy to welcome you for this uh, first uh, webinar, uh, which is organized by the, the Franco-Ukrainian Chamber of Commerce and Industry. This is the first one for 2024. Um, I am Grégoire Daté, the managing partner of uh, Maza Ukraine, a leading international audit tax and advisory firm that has been uh, operating in Ukraine uh, for 15 years. Uh, and I am also a board member of the, the, the French-Ukrainian uh, Chamber of Commerce, uh, in particular heading the Reconstruction Committee. And I will be the moderator today. Uh, uh, the year 2023 has just ended. And today uh, we will uh, discuss uh, about key macroeconomic indicators, uh, labor market, and international assistance, as well as its role in the Ukrainian resilience. Uh, I will make first a quick introduction about the, the, the Franco-Ukrainian Chamber of Commerce and Industry, and, and then I will uh, uh, introduce the topic and let uh, 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 and start the discussion. So quickly, uh, before we start our session, uh, some information about the, the Franco-Ukrainian Chamber of Commerce. Uh, for jo those who join us for the first time, uh, just for you to know that uh, the, the CFU gathers 160 members, uh, uh, French and Ukrainian companies from very diverse horizons. We have, for instance, a mix of large groups. We have SMEs and also we have uh, private entrepreneurs. Our members operate in a very extensive range of sectors. We are in the financial sectors and banks. We have two of the main international banks operating in Ukraine, BNP Paribas and Trade Agricole. Uh, we are also well represented in the agribusiness and agriculture sector. We have the representatives of the main automotive French players. Uh, we have members in the retail, in technology and IT, in luxury, in uh, production, logistic, energy, and also in construction and service. So globally, we, we can say that the, the, CIFI, the CIFU represents one of the biggest international employer in Ukraine, uh, with approximately 25,000 uh, uh, persons employed by companies, uh, uh, members of the French Ukrainian Chamber of Commerce. For, for the discussion today, uh, just for uh, practical points, uh, we are uh, many people, so do not hesitate to use the chat uh, uh, to, to raise your question. Don't wait the end, the more interactivities, it could be uh, good, uh, but use the chat so that it could be uh, e easier to to manage them. Um, then uh, le le let's go on, on the presentation. So I understand that the presentation uh, uh, was to be made by uh, Glyb Veshlinsky, uh, but he, he will join us a bit later. So we have uh, uh, Maxim uh, Samoyuk with us. Who, 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 uh, who will start? Uh, will start the presentation. Uh, just a few words about uh, uh, Gib Vishlinsky. He is a, a, a very well-known economist uh, with an impressive career in economic research and analysis. Uh, currently, he is the executive director of the Center for Economic Strategy, which he has managed uh, since the center was founded. And that is uh, in uh, 2015. He, um, so the, the Center for Economic Strategy is a Ukrainian non-governmental uh, uh, research organization, which has been working on promoting sustainable and inclusive economic growth since uh, the beginning, since it was started. Uh, and he, he, he focus uh, on the most important aspect of public policies uh, and works in order to strengthen the public support for reforms. Uh, before joining the, the Center for Economic Strategy, 
Uh, Lib uh, was a member of the Civic Platform uh, uh, Reanimation Package of Reforms. Uh, he has been also, uh, or he is also a member of many, many boards, in particular the Development Board of Mistetsky Arsenal, uh, the Supervisory Board of De Jure Foundation, also State Watch, and also uh, Gromatsky TV. Uh, before uh, 2015, he was a deputy director at JFK, uh, and before that, he was a senior economist in the International Center for Policy Studies, and he started as a, as a journalist. Um, so, um, regarding today's discussion, uh, we will focus on uh, the economic uh, uh, aspect. Uh, we have seen that the 2020-23 uh, uh, has shown uh, uh, um, stability in economic uh, due to the uh, smart policies that have been implemented and the international support. Ukraine managed to approach some uh, uh, very good indicators comparable to pre-full scale war. Uh, the GDP has grown uh, approximately by five, five and a half percent. Uh, the, um, there was a drop by 30% in 2022. The inflation is also uh, under control uh, uh, and even, even better than some of our neighboring countries. So, um, Maxime, could you please tell us a bit more uh, on the, the macroeconomic situation and the international assistance and the human uh, capital and employment uh, in 2023? I think these are topics important for us to understand where we are and uh, where we have to go. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, my name is Maxim Samoyluk. Uh, I am an economist in the Center for Economic Strategy. Uh, unfortunately, we are having the, uh, a meeting with the Minister of Finance of Ukraine, which should have ended some 15 minutes ago. Uh, but uh, Halip is the moderator there, so uh, he asked me very unexpectedly to, to give an impromptu presentation for you. And he will uh, join us a bit uh, later on. When the when the meeting is finished, so I will start. The, Thank you uh, very much for your activity and taking, taking yes, the road uh, uh, at the last minute. Yes, I, I I will start the today's presentation. Um, I would like to share with you, um, if I may uh, share the screen. Uh, I would like mm -hmm, to, sure. to begin to begin with the. Uh, very impromptu presentation of uh, of our uh, tracker of economic activity and the results of 2023. And I think that it would be a good start for, for the, today's discussion um, so that we could uh, sum up the results of the previous year for the Ukrainian economy. Um, the GDP in 2023 grew by approximately 5%. And the latest estimations by the National Bank reveal that the growth is expected to be even higher by uh, approximately 5.7%. So uh, this is only a recovery after a very sharp drop in 2022. Uh, as you probably know, in 2022, the Ukrainian economy contracted by almost 30%. So this drop uh, is significant. It, it is the, uh, the most uh, devastating drop of the Ukrainian GDP in its history. So in 2023, the GDP started to recover uh, approximately in, um, in the third quarter, in the second and the third quarters of the year. And while the uh, GDP growth was quite significant last year. Uh, the GDP still stands at only about three fourths of the pre full scale invasion level. So uh, this is only a recovery. It should not be uh, understood uh, as a uh, growth of the economy. This is only a, a a recovery after a very significant drop, and the GDP still stands at a significantly 
lower level, level than in 2021. And uh, it should be, uh, we should understand that. Uh, nevertheless, uh, even with this uh, recovery and uh, while the economy is still uh, very uh, damaged by the war, there have been good uh, aspects of the year in terms of the uh, monetary policy. Uh, in 2023, the hryvnia was much stronger than expected. Uh, Ukraine entered the full-scale invasion with a flexible exchange rate. But uh, on the first day of the war, uh, the National Bank of Ukraine uh, stopped the flexibility and it introduced a fixed uh, rate, which was then changed once, and it remained at a level of 36.6 hryvnias for one US dollar for almost all of the year. And in the beginning of the 2023, the expectations, both the National Bank and the uh, Ministry of Finance and the public and all the economists were that the hryvnia would uh, very uh, devaluate by the end of the year. And as you can see here on this chart, uh, an average annual exchange rate set in the state budget was much higher at the rate of 30, 42.2 uh, Ukrainian hryvnias per dollar. However, uh, these rates were never uh, reached. Uh, and the, one of the main reasons for that is the uh, international financial aid, which was coming to Ukraine in, ter in, uh, in very high numbers last year in both grants and loans. And uh, this money uh, actually allowed the National Bank to keep the, uh, the exchange rate uh, fairly stable. And uh, in last October, uh, the National Bank felt safe to switch to a managed flexibility. And uh, for the last few months, uh, the, uh, the hryvnia was uh, much more flexible than it was before. Uh, the official rate at first strengthened, and for the last few months it has been going up. But nevertheless, uh, the situation is uh, fully controlled by the National Bank, and it has all the reserves and all the necessary resources to, uh, to properly uh, control the, the monetary policy in terms of, of the exchange rate. Uh, as uh, has been mentioned uh, today, despite the war, inflation in Ukraine was slowing down faster than in some of the neighboring countries of Ukraine. And in the end of the year, it is uh, fairly uh, lower than in, than, in, than in other countries. Uh, in Ukraine, the inflation in, uh, we came into the 2023 with a very high inflation uh, which reached almost 30% at the beginning of the year. The reason for that was uh, the uh, monetary financing of the budget, which started in 2022 when the uh, international financial aid was insufficient at first and came in, in at highly irregular levels. However, uh, in 2023, uh, as with the exchange rate, Quite unexpectedly, the inflation dropped quite significantly because the National Bank had no reason to print money to cover its expenses uh, for the whole 2023. And we, came, we come into uh, 2024 with an inflation level of 5.1%, which is lower than in the neighboring countries and is actually not that higher that, than uh, in the... Uh, European Union as a whole. And uh, this is a very uh, positive signal, of course. And uh, as Khalip has joined us, I would just wrap up my part of this impromptu presentation with the mentioning of the international financial assistance, with, which has been a hugely important aspect of the Ukrainian economy, uh, both in 2022 both in 2023 and will be very important in 2024. But we are now speaking of um, uh, if 
and not uh, how many, because uh, uh, the question is uh, whether uh, Ukraine will receive all the necessary financing, and it is uh, a big question at the moment. And uh, uh, the issue is what to do if Ukraine does not receive it. So in 2023, Ukraine received $42.5 billion of uh, foreign funds, 27% of them uh, came in form, in form of grants, mostly from the United States of America. And uh, the other part came in, 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 uh, in loans, uh, mostly from the European Union countries. And of course, from the International Monetary Fund, uh, which uh, even changed its rules in 2023 to allow for an extended financing for Ukraine, uh, both uh, last year and in the years to come. Uh, so, Hlip, uh, uh, welcome to this webinar. Uh, I will stop uh, my share and give. Uh, no, the... no, 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 Max. Uh, please, yes. uh, could could you could you please continue sharing? It will be uh, it will be convenient. Okay. Uh, yeah, I am sorry uh, for being late. Hello, uh, it was uh, it was a mission with Minister of Finance of Ukraine within Thank our you. project exactly to address uh, to address potential policy options uh, to discuss potential policy options like what to do if. Uh, external financing uh, this and next years will be will be not enough uh max maxim is uh, in fact our project manager in charge of uh, of this project uh, where we track uh, economic situations so he's uh, he, he he was even better than me in presenting uh, in presenting these figures because he is working with it on a daily basis however like when we when we speak about the future it's is uh, uh it is very complicated as uh, um for this year uh we like uh, and the, here i am answering questions uh, that uh, uh, that were in, uh, in in the list of questions that were sent by diana uh certainly uh, like this year already pos poses uh, issues of whether uh we will get enough foreign financing like when uh, when we look on this uh, 42.6 last year it was in fact like the second budget of ukraine and uh, uh max you could uh, uh help me in uh, showing the chart where uh, where you compare budget revenues and budget expenditures which is uh, like in fact very uh, very clear yeah like you could here you could you could uh, compare revenues in green and expenditures in blue and uh, in fact like the deficit funding that was uh, uh, in fact funding from our partners is uh, is like the second budget so that we fund uh, fund the war from taxes and we fund uh, all normal government revenues from external funding so like without uh, as we do not plan to cut uh, uh, war funding and in fact we will have to increase the war funding and tax base is uh, uh, is rather limited and like when we like, were discussing with minister of finance potential options uh like i could not recall any options that we discussed this is among realistic options this is uh more than 100 million 100 billion of uh, grievances per year so we, there are no silver bullets uh, uh we uh we could mobilize uh, some domestic resources however uh volume uh, the size of this domestic resources is uh, limited so we that's why for 2024 if for example we do not get uh, uh, planned uh, 11.8 uh, uh, billion of dollars of us budget funding uh, it could be manageable by this means uh, that we discussed with minister of finance including uh, including uh, uh, catching some non priority expenses and increasing some taxes uh, maybe some limited money printing that could be uh, uh, that could uh, have no significant impact on uh, uh, in inflation, that could put it into inflationary, uh, bring some inflationary spiral. In. However, uh, like if we do not get uh, even in 2024 this additional $50 billion for uh, weapons, 
uh, we will need to buy these weapons, to buy at least some weapons that will need to maintain, try to maintain at least the existing front line. And uh, it is already a risk for this year. Uh, like currently, baseline scenario is that Ukraine will get this money. However, like still, we have very high, uh, very high unpredictability here. And for 2025 and later. Uh, risks uh, risks are much higher uh, as uh, elections in the United States uh, are looming and uh, uh, nobody could expect like what will be really the policy of uh, Donald Donald Trump if he is elected and the range is very large from like zero support to Ukraine to some support uh, or like something that we could not predict at all and uh, uh, with the help of only European Union and other G7 members uh, it is uh, rather hard to predict uh, like what uh, um, how the war will uh, uh, go on and uh, how we could uh, fund basic budget needs uh, so nobody is even like trying to plan this uh, uh, realistically and the scenarios could be like very different uh, uh, and uh, compared to this uh, like when we look on war scenarios like uh, uh, when ukraine um, uh, get no money from uh, United States at all, get no support in weapons from the United States, there is some limited support from the European Union and other partners. Uh, it is, uh, it, like, compared to this, the 2023 will look like uh, uh, economic miracle, like uh, a very good situation that is comparable to pre-war as um, uh, Max have already shown in previous slides where majority of GDP loss is uh, like in fact uh, losing uh, uh, some territories because of occupation, losing some people because of uh, uh, refugees. Uh, uh, however, no real, uh, no real pressure on uh, incomes of those who remain in Ukraine and who are not IDPs and uh, like no uh, like signs that we could uh, uh, read in history books uh, like uh, uh, rationing of food uh, hyperinflation and uh, a mass party mass uh, hunger among uh, uh, low income people however like it could it could uh, it could be like in the range of scenarios if for example a uh, new american administration decides not to support ukraine uh, and ukraine decides not to just uh, like put a uh, white flag uh, uh, in forward of us and uh, agree to, to like uh, to like formal or de facto or quasi occupation by Russia. Uh, Max, could you go uh, please uh, uh, lower to other slides? Like there are additional uh, interesting things here. Uh, generally, like we uh, we were able to cover. Uh, to cover uh, domestic bonds that were uh, expiring uh, in 2023 and cover all uh, uh, interest uh, to be paid on them from uh, money raised via domestic bonds. And uh, we expect that in 2024 there are still reserves that could be used, uh, uh, especially when we speak about free money that are held by the banks. Max, could you please go down? Yeah, and you could see it in record profits that banks had that show like they were due to monetary policy of the national bank. Uh, they had uh, uh, both uh, like while they had a lot of liquidity, interest rates uh, of uh, like non-risk assets like deposit certificates of the national bank and uh, treasury uh, government bonds uh, uh, were rather high. So and the cost of um, uh, money for banks was uh, rather low. Like for example, um, uh, remain uh, like 
positive balances on uh, um, of military personnel uh, like that were paid like zero interest by by the largest banks. Uh, in fact, like the decision of uh, the decision of the government and parliament to tax uh, these profits by the rate of fifty percent in two thousand twenty three was in fact met with the like, full understanding of the banking sector and uh, uh, it will be a significant help in uh, February when uh, uh, this profit tax, uh, uh, corporate income tax will be paid by, by banks. Uh, it will support as uh, currently uh, we have another presentation of this tracker and as uh, like one of... Uh, our colleague said it is the set, like it was the saddest slide on economic situation uh, built by by Maxim, where like we see zero external finance and for 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 the Ukrainian budget as of thirty uh, first of January this year. Uh, you want to show the saddest slide? Yeah. It, it, it takes longer than expected, but it is actually quite sad because uh, the January 2024 is the first month during the full-scale invasion where Ukraine hasn't received any foreign financing and it will impact the budget capabilities quite a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so could you please uh, go back to, to this uh, annual presentation? We have some additional interesting slides before we come to questions. Um, like certainly the war had significant impact of uh, exports on one side like they went down uh, uh, significantly compared to 2021 mostly because of occupation of territories and destruction uh, of uh, Ukrainian uh, physical assets including uh, Azovstal and partially Ilyicha steel plant uh, that in any case are occupied by Russians uh, However, uh, in, uh, to, uh, in the end of 2023, due to successful deblocking de of uh, Ukrainian black sea ports, like so-called uh, big Odessa ports, uh, in fact, in December, the volume of export is the same as it was uh, uh, before before the war so uh, we and it has uh, uh, the sector it has uh, this the blocking has uh, the most significant uh, effect is metallurgy uh, some products uh, that are not uh, that are like half processed like iron ore for example they are uh, like their price per ton was not high enough to uh, uh, to get profits uh, when produced and exported via rail or other way, ways of export it was only profitable if exported by the sea and uh, like the blocking of the sports in fact allowed of uh, uh, iron ore to be exported and produced in fact res resume production was resumed and uh, also other uh, metallurgy products so you see that uh, in 2023 still like food had uh, uh, the largest share uh, like over uh, over over half of all ukrainian exports and uh, metals were disproportionately lower compared to pre-war times max could you go down please yeah, we were uh, like last year was very good, not only because of significant foreign funding, but of uh, extraordinarily good uh, uh, weather conditions for both plants that uh, uh, where Ukraine is uh, a big exporter, but or also plants like vegetables that are heavily consumed domestically, and it had uh, also a very positive, uh, like good impact on inflation, because uh, in uh, Ukraine. Ukrainians uh, consumer consumption basket food uh, uh, comprises over half and in this uh, uh, and in this basket uh, of food uh, uh, vegetables have a significant share as well as also grains and uh, you see this uh, um, 
as a uh, like it was uh, it was very good harvest uh, and uh, uh, it. Uh, it could be compared to record high harvest of 2021 when taking into account uh, uh, land that was lost due to occupation or to mining uh, that uh, made it uh, impossible to uh, to be uh, to be used for agricultural production. However, it also like brings a risk when we look on 2024 because uh, like uh, we could not expect that we will have the same good weather and this is also like the part of inflation forecast of the national bank where national bank expects that inflation in 2024 will be higher uh, even in the basic scenario and closer to 10 percent like currently they revised their forecast to from 9.8 to 8.6 but in any case it is higher than uh, than is expect than is uh, the fact uh, for 2023 Max, could you please uh, go down? Yeah, like I have already uh, spoke about metals, like sad story of uh, of the industry that uh, in in which Ukraine has a very significant historical and geographical competitive advantages. Uh, we believe that uh, Ukraine will will still have competitive advantages in this uh, in this sector after the war. And uh, uh, the last slides, um, there was a question about human capital in uh, in uh, in your questions, and like the question was really good, like how it comes that uh, like unemployment is uh, much higher than it was before the war. However. Uh, also businesses uh, say about lack of talents and uh, inability to hire people we uh, we see such employ unemployment in fact is uh, uh, significantly higher like here we base it on uh, surveys of infosapiens such as uh, a polling company uh, and uh, we, as we do not have um, do not have new information uh, from official statistics as uh, uh, like uh, they stopped conducting their surveys of unemployment. However, we could see trends here that uh, yes, uh, like the shock period of the south of uh, uh, first quarter, like second and third quarter of uh, 2022 uh, is over and uh, unemployment is uh, currently lower than 20 percent uh, however and um, uh, also like food insecurity is the share of people who have to uh, economize on food is uh, uh, rather uh, uh, rather still rather high while, while also not, not such so high as it was in the shock period uh, we we see that uh, like partially it is uh, like so called structural unemployment when changes uh, in times of war in uh, both sectoral and uh, geographical structure of economy is not matched by uh, uh, changes in uh, location and the uh, skills of people. Uh, we see that like war had a stronger impact on some sectors and uh, uh, less impact on other sectors. We see that uh, factors like um, uh, geographic location of people uh, because of both uh, internal uh, displacement and also uh, refugees coming from Ukraine to other countries, uh, six million of them, uh, uh, half, uh, at least half are people who worked before uh, who worked before the invasion, mostly women. Uh, it is, uh, uh, it is like in fact the structural issue, and uh, here uh, like we think that uh, uh, it is uh, like it should it should be some rather com complicated uh, uh, way of having pilot like 
the sort of private uh, public partnership uh, when uh, on one side the uh, government is trying to create uh, some opportunities both for relocation of businesses so that like uh, businesses like production facilities are close to labor sources on another side like pro um, uh, special projects, including uh, donor funded, are needed to build housing for those IDPs and refugees who want to return to Ukraine, but uh, they have no place to return, but they want jobs. And uh, uh, in uh, it was easier in uh, like times of. Uh, like planned economy when everything was state owned and like you could plan like all these processes like uh, building new towns like for new production facilities like it was done in Soviet times in market economy it is more complicated because like you need to create some incentives you need to create these partnerships you need to build like some industrial parks you also need to have uh, like uh, to fight a symmetry of information when uh, people uh, don't know that like where to go like for example if they want to be able to go to some safer areas they try to go to uh, uh, to settlements where they uh, like where they believe they uh, there are more job opportunities sometimes they move to uh, places where they are more culturally uh, close uh, like for example if they are Russian speakers from the east they could have like some uh, barriers some psychological barriers to move for example to western ukraine because like it is easier for them to go to dnipro or even to kharkiv uh, and uh, try to find jobs there so i i think that it is a very complicated issue that should be addressed uh, max could you please show uh, the slide on the vacancies but generally like what we see is that um, the picture of uh, uh, like when you look on um, a uh, number of people applying for vacancies, which is significantly lower than uh, uh, than we had in 2021. Uh, so 2021 is. Uh, um, the, the least bright green, like you could see this average of 2021, and uh, 2023 is uh, um, is uh, uh, darkest, like the brightest green, and uh, like obvious factors that are influencing uh, uh, besides like the structural factors are mobilization of men, and uh, to even more extent uh, like women being not able to uh, to work in Ukraine because like they are abroad. I think uh, like one Max, I believe which is the final slide here. Yeah? This is the last slide. Uh, my comment is that uh, like we heard like from some businesses so that uh, uh, they uh, uh, they are trying to apply stricter policies uh, of like requesting people to go back to return to Ukraine or to like uh, or to be fired because like they are not willing to return. I think like in fact the same policies were introduced by by the government by state on and prices before I, I i think that like it could be too strict in the current labor market conditions and uh, despite the fact that like we in uh, our organization we have uh, like most of people working here in kiev but i i, I think that uh, especially in those businesses that have a significant share of uh, higher educated women uh, needed to work like there should be more flexibility in policies uh, despite like obvious reasons that could push businesses to stricter policies uh, otherwise uh, like there will be very significant constraints of growing the business if there is more demand uh, coming for for services uh, that sh uh, and products that are produced uh, that's like all I wanted to say in uh, and I uh, Thank you, Maxim, for uh, for helping uh, in uh, like this force majeure situation and uh, uh, for like speaking about macroeconomic trends. So I am open to questions. Like I believe we still have like some time. Many thanks to to, to both of you for for this very clear and, and, uh, and complete uh, explanation. In, uh, 
presentation. Uh, what about yes. the total? Yes, yeah, sorry. What about the total pop pop population in Ukraine? Because so I mean, so most so of your charts can be. I mean, they could be distorted by the, the, the total population. For example, unemployment. If there are fewer people able to work, unemployment decreases. Normal, but it's uh, not. It's not relevant. Unemployment here is uh, uh, the share of people surveyed who said they are they are unemployed. So it is a, a relative indicator. Like when we speak about total population, we stick to the estimates that was done by the minister, um, sorry, by the Institute of Demography together with uh, uh, UNFPA, that uh, is uh, uh, 31.6 million on territories controlled by the Ukrainian government currently. Like it is very like they have an estimate and it is available on their website of the Institute of Demography. You could look on it, look at it. However, uh, like there is an issue of uh, it is very complicated to estimate uh, age and gender distribution of those people, uh, as uh, uh, you do not have like full statistics for refugees. Like some data is uh, restricted. Uh, uh, as they uh, they are related to uh, deaths uh, uh, of men in the military, uh, but like there, there there are some estimates done by our colleagues in the Institute of Demography, but general figure such one point six is rather uh, like uh, uh, it, it is based on uh, data from mobile operators and uh, it is like I believe uh, rather realistic. It uh, when it goes together uh, very good with uh, data of our. Uh, neighbors, uh, when we speak about border crossings and people registered as uh, uh, refugees or under temporary protection in the European Union and other countries. So to, to, to sum up on this, uh, on this topic, it means that uh, to today we assess uh, how many people are uh, fled abroad I have something like seven, eight million. Six. six. Like six. We, our our estimate is six, uh, six to six point five. Uh, however, we should uh, uh, say that uh, we have already calculated uh, the number, uh, like the net uh, uh, outward migration in 2023, and unfortunately, we estimate that uh, uh, we lost uh, additional 500,000 people. Uh, we believe that majority of them are uh, like, as we call, uh, quasi labor migrants. So they are uh, they are those who uh, like some of them certainly fled from uh, from uh, security risks uh, from uh, occupation from destruction, uh, including Kahovka Dam and uh, adjusting uh, like and uh, areas that are close to them. But a significant share are those who uh, maybe even were among labor migrants before the war and they found some job opportunities and went abroad. Mm -hmm. Understood. And, 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 and I don't know if I'm mistaken, but it seems to me that you, you made also some, some search and some analysis on how many people could come back when the yeah, war well, ends. Yeah, with the, with the complicated. We did this analysis and uh, we also uh, like conducted the second way of survey, like the first way was a year ago, we conducted another one in December uh, 2023, data is still in analysis. We should say that uh, like our like central understanding is that uh, we could expect uh, with unpredictable lengths of the war, approximately like half of people to come back. However, it depends a lot on of, of, on scenarios, and uh, in the worst scenarios, we could expect that uh, like uh, approximately like one third of uh, refugees come come back. And the, um, like we already see that longer war lingers, uh, the lower is the share of those who are sure that they will go back. 
uh, and uh, it is very clear, like starting from uh, uh, from children who are growing and uh, like entering the universities uh, and uh, uh, like some professional education in host countries. Uh, there are also like uh, uh, single women uh, like finding uh, uh, finding uh, like potential partners and uh, marrying and uh, uh, building families uh, in host countries. So uh, even like not speaking about psychological uh, effects, like finding jobs, finding housing, etc. In host countries, uh, like there are more uh, like long term. Uh, long-term uh, like factors influencing and uh, like if we speak about scenario of a very long war certainly like uh, we will have uh, more population lost uh, like lower share of those who will return mm -hmm. okay okay understood thank you very much for this clear explanation is there any question to, to be then Maxime in the audience. I don't think I see nothing on the chat. I don't know if you want to, to ask any question live or in return. Let us know. In, in the meantime, maybe um, a question from my side. So you you, you explained at the, the beginning, yes, the, the importance of the, the, the international support for the, the financial stability. Uh, uh, of uh, the Ukrainian economy and, and the, 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 the situation we have in 24, which is uh, far from being uh, done, and also 25. Uh, in other words, uh, before we clarify on the uh, EU and the US uh, support, which is uh, still uh, being discussed uh, here and there, uh, how many times uh, can Ukraine uh, uh, continue the way it is? I mean, the, the, the reserves are quite high. We have a maximum level of reserve. Uh, inflation is still okay. And with the parameters are globally okay for the moment. How many times can we stay without any further help uh, before it becomes a bit more complicated? Yeah. Uh, it is complicated because uh, uh, it is complicated to estimate because like you have uh, uh, variables that is uh, uh, level of well-being of people. So uh, like if uh, if we have a bad scenario and uh, society generally agrees that uh, uh, like party is better than being occupied by Russians, then uh, like economy could stay like it could it could stay uh when uh, like pensioners are getting uh, even lower pensions uh budget sector employees are getting even lower wages uh we have uh, uh, uh we could resort to money printing and it could it could uh, result in like lower salaries uh, lower real salaries to servicemen and we could mobilize uh, like all resources like for example like stopping education in universities and like using universities as production facilities for drones etc so it is uh, uh, it is very distant from like what you could see in kiev uh, and in other ukrainian cities uh, uh, that are on significant uh, distance from the front line uh, However, like for a normal, like for a life as we like as we see it now, uh, we could um, uh, we have enough uh, reserves uh, for the budget to be funded. Uh, like we have already seen that it was enough for January. Uh, there are still reserves for February. We expect that. Uh, EU funding will uh, start coming from February, from the late February, uh, based on decision to be taken uh, tomorrow, regardless of uh, decision uh, like whether it will be supported by Hungary or no. Uh, like there is general expectations that like Ukraine will get money flowing in any case. Uh, however, like we have this risk with uh, US uh, US assistance, uh, I think that uh, European Union could be. Uh, um, 
like we could discuss with European Union uh, paying some money within this four-year program up front this year, maybe mobilize some resources for the next year, but generally uh, we could expect that like if we have uh, uh, if we have any economic growth this year in a bad scenario when we do not receive uh, money from the United States, it will be it will be good. Like so, generally, like a good scenario for this year is uh, uh, like having some economic growth, maintaining contact line uh, uh, in uh, in the field as we see it now, like without losing additional territory to Russians, and then like preparing for like either. Uh, uh, either some like renewed, uh, uh, renewed uh, attacks, uh, like renewed, uh, like recapturing of territories and renewed resources coming from our partners uh, in 2025, or like preparing to some uh, uh, much harder scenario for 2025 and uh, uh, coming years. Mm -hmm. Okay, understood. Um, another question, maybe uh, still a, a few minutes. Uh, you, you, you mentioned that the, the, the tax base, and you explained earlier the, the tax base to, to increase the revenue in the budget uh, seems to be limited. You, you, you gave the case of the banks that have been contributing much more in, in 2023. Uh, for the, the non-banking businesses, uh, is there any things to expect regarding uh, taxation? Uh, generally, like uh, both business and uh, citizens, employees, households uh, need to prepare to increase in tax pressure. Uh, both, uh, like we, we, we hope and believe that it will start from closing obvious loopholes uh like uh addressing loopholes and simplified taxation uh, system in uh, uh products that are uh, um uh, where we uh, where we pay excise ta taxes but like what uh, what is discussed is uh, increase in uh, like for for even for scenario when we need to cover for the gap uh, uh, that is that could be created by lack of US assistance. It could be like some increase in VAT. It could be some increase in personal income tax. There could be some increase in corporate income tax. Uh, so uh, like closing some additional uh, like loopholes and privileges, like for example, uh, uh, on uh, imports of uh, electric cars. So like there are still resources that could be found uh, in uh, taxation, uh, like but with clear understanding that uh, like it is a trade off between uh, between covering budget needs in times of wars and trying not to have uh, very uh, negative impact on the economic development on, uh, on businesses. Mm -hmm. Okay, understood. So let, let's be prepared for that. Um, okay, a a any other uh, question in the audience? Okay, the last one on my side. If you still have a minute, let me know yeah. very, very quickly. Yeah, uh, 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 we have all heard about the, 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 the uh, acquisition uh, which is being uh, organized at the moment in the telecom sector, uh, namely uh, uh, the, the French businessman mm -hmm. Xavier Niel acquiring uh, LifeCell. Um, we see at the moment that uh, there are a lot of things done uh, by foreign government to develop uh, the insurance of investment and in Ukraine as well uh, to, to develop uh, insurance on the export. Uh, how do you see the trend of uh, foreign investment? Uh, I... Is there a trend in the context that you have described? How do you see this part? 
uh, I could say that government spent a lot of efforts and really uh, like already, uh, especially when we compared to mid 2022, now we have uh, like rather large spectrum of tools, both on the side of the Ukrainian government for uh, ensuring risks, but also uh, on our partners. Like practically when we look on all countries that are large trade and investment partners of Ukraine, like Poland, Germany, France, United Kingdom, United States, uh, uh, each Japan, uh, each country has its own tools for uh, ensuring uh, trade and investment in Ukraine. Uh, Ukrainian government has tools. So uh, I believe that uh, it is uh, like it is strategically very important for, uh, for 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 the large European economies to have like more skin in the game, like more investment uh, on the ground in Ukraine with like proper insurance and like everybody understands that uh, uh, there are risks that they have to be insured, but also there is a role of business uh, like uh, to uh, like try not to think out of the box, like, but act out of the box, because, uh, uh, like, for many businesses, like, uh, it is uh, like they could uh, they could go in like some lazy way, I believe, like trying to somehow uh, like live within Ukraine, uh, like collect profits uh, uh, that they could not uh, get like uh, send out of Ukraine as dividends on their bank accounts in the best way like invest them into Ukrainian government bonds uh, however there are already some good examples of businesses reinvesting their profits in Ukraine and uh, I believe that it is much better than just like uh, saving this money on bank accounts reinvest in, uh, in uh, opportunities related to relocation, to some market uh, opportunities that uh, appear in Ukraine in times of war, but also like for new businesses to come, especially in industries where Ukraine will uh, have uh, uh, competitive advantages like military production. It will for sure be a serious business and serious industry in Ukraine after the war, but also like some uh, opportunities where countries like France have uh, significant knowledge and competitive advantage like nuclear energy for example it will for sure uh, like Ukraine could be uh, could be could be realistically a uh, very significant supplier of green energy including nuclear energy after the war yeah thanks thank you for this uh, this uh, input uh, yeah, we are um, totally convinced about the, the role of uh, business and support that is necessary. I really appreciate uh, your, your formula and that we need to act out of the box. And this is a, a good expression of the, the resilience that uh, gave the, 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 the strong result uh, we have seen in 2023 and that I am convinced uh, will also make uh, the, the year 24 and 25 to come uh, in some uh, strong year, even if uh, today we are not totally sure, we have seen uh, still a lot of things to do. And that uh, we are convinced of that. Uh, uh, time is flying fast. And, uh, we, we had a lot of very interesting and uh, very important uh, information delivered by Lib and Maxim. If you have any last question before we close the session, let us know now. I think it's so clear. Yeah, please. Yeah, we are open to any questions from uh, French business community in Ukraine. Uh, Diana has uh, my contacts, so if uh, any of you like want uh, uh, like some questions to be answered, some uh, discussions, uh, like participation in meetings with uh, uh, with uh, like people from your head offices, so that you convince them in uh, uh, opportunities. We are always open. Uh, it's our job to help Ukrainian economy grow. Yeah, this is uh, well appreciated and certainly uh, maybe we will continue this, uh, this um, discussion and we really appreciate this. 
your, uh, your input. So thank you very much to both of you, especially in this uh, tough uh, agenda planning for you. And thank, uh, you. thank you everyone for attending. I wish you all uh, a nice day. Thank you. See thank you, you very much. Bye-bye, everyone. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.